now the papers. Hello and welcome to our look at the stories making the headlines in the Sunday newspapers. And with us today, the Sun on Sunday's political editor, Dave Wooding. Hi, Dave. Good morning to you. We'll morning, hear from, Victoria. We'll hear from you in just a sec. We're just going to take a look at the front pages. Uh, and here we go. Don't panic, declares the headline in The Observer, which reports how the government is scrambling to reassure you that rising gas prices won't mean an energy crisis. Supermarkets brace for frozen food shortages on account of supply chain issues, says The Independent, and quotes the business secretary, Kwasi Kwarteng, as saying, there's no cause for immediate concern. That's below its picture story that London Fashion Week is back in style, says The Independent. Sunday Telegraph says the new foreign secretary, Liz Truss, has defended Britain's new security pact with the US and Australia. She's written a piece for them today, and she says in it that freedoms need to be defended. The paper also comments on Strictly's, Strictly moving with the times with a picture of its first male same-sex pairing. Uh, the government will be very happy with the Sunday Express's main headline, Boris bid to level up the world. Uh, that's their take on the Prime Minister's trip to the United States, flying out to New York tomorrow to make a speech at the UN. Sunday Times focuses on the House of Commons Speaker's anger as extremists, they say, terrorise one female Labour MP. This is... Rosie Duffield uh, being forced to pull out, she says, of the Labour Party conference. Also on the Times front page is a report on hopes for a cure of an aggressive form of breast cancer. We'll talk more about that. It's not quite about a cure, um, but we'll talk about it in a second with Dave. Mail on Sunday says MPs are asking why the BBC failed, it claims, to properly search for clothing belonging to the murdered schoolgirl Karen Hadaway that had been given to the reporter Martin Bashir by Karen's mum and subsequently lost by Mr Bashir. The Mirror speaks of a wonder drug hope for Leeds Rhinos rugby legend Rob Burrow who has motor neurone disease. The paper says the drug has had dramatic results in American tri trials and it quotes Rob as saying he's a realist but without hope there is nothing. So, uh, Dave, we're going to start, I think, with the story about the Labour MP, Rosie Duffield. Uh, tell us more about what the Sunday Times is reporting. Well, she should be a bit of a hero, this woman, Rosie, because uh, she won the, uh, uh, the seat of Canterbury in, uh, from the Tories, which has been a Conservative seat for many years. And she is, in fact, chair of the, uh, the Women's Parliamentary Labour Group uh, in the Labour Party. However, she's getting lots of abuse on the, uh, the sewer that is Twitter, um, and her crime was, was merely to like a comment by Piers Morgan. Um, again, it, uh, as is often the case, it was connected with the, uh, the transgender issue. And she said she's been bombarded with so many uh, threats from people, she says, including misogynists, uh, who, have, who have really made her feel scared, frightened and terrified about going to the conference and she's been advised not to go. Well, the speaker, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, who's been holding a G7 summit in Chorley Lanks, hometown, uh, for uh, other speakers around the, uh, the, the, the leading economies, um, has said uh, he's going to do something about this and get other speakers to increase their protection of politicians who, uh, who are being victimised on the internet for merely stating their views. Yeah, I mean, it is extraordinary. And what she is quoted as saying on the front of the Sunday Times, LGBT plus Labour now seem to hate my guts. And I feared they'd have a massive go at me at the party conference, said Rosie Duffield. The people who threaten me, I don't think are actually likely to harm me. They just say it often and very loudly. I don't know if you follow her on Twitter, Dave, but I do. And some of the stuff she gets yes. is absolutely disgusting. But the, the, the fact that she now is being advised not to go to her own party conference because of security fears is horrific, isn't it? Well, it's 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 a banning of free speech. I mean, the things she has said, in fact, let's not be let's let's be bad. What she did was like somebody else's comment, which wasn't wildly controversial. Uh, it, it means that she can't go out and speak at a major political conference, and and this is quite alarming. And she's not an extremist. 
There's one case it, it, she mentions in this interview uh, in which uh, a, a leading um, Labour activist who praised her and, had, and posted a picture of himself alongside her uh, on the Twitter, um, a year later after this row erupted, then uh, post the same picture again, uh, saying he'd be ashamed to, to be alongside her. Yeah. Uh, now that only provokes the row and, and we get what's called a pile on, on Twitter where all people who follow these outspoken extremists all dive in and start adding their abuse. It's it's really quite shocking. And she and just to a uh, final thought on this from Rosie Duffield herself, she says in this interview with The Times, for the first time in my life, having been an ambassador for a gender balanced 50-50 parliament, I would hesitate to encourage other women to come into politics, which is extraordinary. Yes. Uh, also on the front page of the Times, uh, I was drawn to this story because of the, the headline. When you read it, actually, it's not quite as, as, as encouraging as maybe the headline suggests. Hopes rise for a breast cancer cure. And uh, this is to do with the, uh, with the company AstraZeneca, who, as we know, make um, a, a COVID jab. But what is this story, Dave? Yes. Well, I the point you make is a valid one there, Victoria, because I was always taught when I came into journalism, one of the things you always had to be careful about was raising false hopes about a cure for cancer. So we must uh, balance this out a little bit. It, it, it's hopes of a cure and not a cure. Yeah. Uh, and what, what, what they've got with it, AstraZeneca, widely praised for their um, vaccine against COVID, is a, is a, uh, is a new uh, treatment for um, call, called NHER2, in which uh, for an aggressive form of cancer, which in which uh, three out of four women who uh, have this uh, don't uh, suffer a recurrence of of, uh, of of cancer within a year of taking it, which is a massive uh, forward uh, step. I mean, what what it is, what it does is it, it tackles a protein which uh, accelerates the growth of cancerous cells, um, and, and so it, the fact that it's it's had some great impact on this is is quite. Uh, positive because of course you've got 54,000 uh, diagnoses each year and about 12,000 people die of uh, as a result of breast cancer yeah. so this is a, a great step forward and it's a, it's a long road to a cure but nevertheless this is a, an important step and it's good news it is and and this is actually for women whose breast cancer has progressed so it's it's women whose <clears throat> breast cancer is is not uh, treatable um, yes they can and the, the reason that this drug is potentially important is that it can extend their life which is you know uh, when people have stage four cancer it's, it's it's what they're absolutely looking for of course now in another um, sunday newspaper we've got a story of another young woman i would describe her as young julia bradbury 51 years of age uh, who has revealed to the mail that she has been diagnosed with breast cancer Yes, um, this, this is a very moving interview across four pages in the Mail on Sunday, in which she said, you know, a tells how, and this is a story that many women uh, will, will, will understand uh, and uh, have been through themselves, where they go for a routine diagnosis and it turns their life upside down. She says it was shattering. She was told um, uh, she's going to have a mastectomy uh, next month, but she's um, she's put on a very very brave face and saying she's um, she's doing it so that she can, uh, so can can look after her children and see her children. And um, she's very very positive, full of uh, full of hope. And um, it's a very very moving interview. It's a it, it's definitely worth reading. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, looking at the Sunday Mirror today, uh, Rob Burrow, who uh, many viewers will have seen, certainly on BBC Breakfast, has documented uh, his challenges with MND, and, which is motor neurone disease, and he is potentially taking part in what the Mirror describes as a wonder drug trial. Um, we don't know if it's a wonder drug, but again, he is talking about the fact that, look, this might extend his life a little bit. Yes, uh, Rob's um, Leeds Rhinos uh, hero. He's got and England. He's got. Uh, he's only thirty-eight. He's got three children aged um, nine, six, and two. And he says this is the hope that he wants to see his children uh, to reach the age of eighteen. 
Um, the drug, unfortunately, is only available in America at the moment. It's not available here, but he's taking steps to have it brought over from uh, Massachusetts to have that treatment. Again, um, a, an uplifting story and one where we all keep our fingers crossed for him. Definitely, definitely. Now, front of the Sunday Telegraph is a story that we've been covering all weekend here on BBC News. Gas crisis hits frozen food supply. And you feel, Dave, like this is a story that's going to grow throughout the week, don't you? Yes, um, most papers have used this big somewhere in their pages. Uh, what, uh, gas prices and food, people will start saying, what's the connection here? Well, gas is used uh, it, to stun animals for meat uh, when they're slaughtered for meat. It's also used in the packaging uh, for, for deep freezing uh, food. Uh, but the gas prices have gone up. Some firms have gone bust or closed down or have limited their production and as a result there are growing food shortages there's even concerns some meat products will, uh, will run out within two weeks and there are big concerns about christmas getting the turkey on the table now i, I implore your listeners and viewers not to uh, to go out and panic buy uh, probably they'll buy toilet rolls anyway as they usually do when they panic buy <laughs> 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 It's not just our viewers and listeners, it's your That's readers as well, well Dave. Isn't it? <laughs> but, um, but nevertheless, um, uh, it is an alarming uh, development. Yeah. And uh, as a result, uh, Kwasi Kwarteng, the uh, business secretary, is, has been working flat out all week to try and sort this. Now, it's important the government do something about this because, uh, apart from uh, national security, keeping people well fed and their homes heated is probably the biggest uh, goal that any government has is a big duty on the government and so uh, they've got to keep the food uh, uh, supplies moving. Yeah, I mean it's a basic requirement of, of a government isn't it? But yeah. I just want, you know when you, what what actually can the government do? I mean, ha can they make these two fertilisation plants that have shut down reopen? Can they subsidise them? Can they, can, I mean the cap is meant to come off the energy prices in October. Can they, can they delay that? What can they actually do Dave? What do you reckon? I mean, there is not a lot they can do other than talk uh, at the moment to mm. the uh, producers of, of, of gas and find out what and fertilise and find out what can be done to help them. Now, it might well be that some kind of temporary support for these uh, companies has to be given, but uh, uh, the, the thought of food, uh, not supermarkets running out of food and the shelves being empty w is a grim one, which the Prime Minister will be all too aware of. I mean, we've got uh, inflation, we've got uh, um, the unions flexing their muscles a little bit, we've got a pandemic. All the uh, all the, all the, the ingredients of a, of a winter of discontent are there, and, and uh, Boris Johnson and his ministers really have to get a grip of this one fast before it gets out of control. Yeah, and you could have added massive waiting lists, NHS waiting lists as well to that list. Exactly. Right, now, your exclusive today in The Sun. Uh, Standing is going to return to the Premiership. Now, this is a story that I feel is every year someone says this is going to happen. You say it's definitely happening. First time in 30 years. Tell us more, Dave. Yes, well, um, it seems that the new Culture Secretary, uh, Nadine Dorries, one of her first acts uh, will be to bring back uh, standing uh, on the uh, in, in Premier League football grounds. Now, these were outlawed 27 years ago, 1994, uh, after the Taylor report into the Hillsborough disaster where 97 uh, fans uh, were killed. And... Um, and they've been looking into this because since uh, since standing was banned, uh, you get to some stadiums, I've seen it, where fans want to stand. And so they're sitting in a, they're in a seated area and they're all standing up and, and it causes more problems uh, than if they were standing in, a, in, in an area designated for standing. Now, it's not going to be a return of the terraces. It will be no. areas where you have a designated spot with a seat, but there's a there's a rail in front of you so that if you're all standing, you can stand safely. Uh, now, what the, what, what's going to be announced uh, later this week is for the, uh, a number of clubs to apply to run pilot schemes uh, starting uh, in the second half of this season. And if that is a success, other clubs will then be allowed to apply to install safe seating. And it's hoped that uh, the, um, uh, the clubs who want it will be able to do so uh, with the next couple of years. Yeah. Do you think this is controversial, Dave, or or because some supporters groups have been pushing it, it it's got their backing, so it will be all right? 
It, it is very difficult. You know, when you see the tragedies that have happened on, on the old style terraces, we're never, ever going to go back to that. And I stress that these uh, safe standing areas will be nothing like the old style terraces. Yeah. Uh, but I think the government has made it clear they're working very, very carefully, taking slow steps. Um, they're, they're speaking to supporters groups, football clubs, police, safety experts. And I don't think they'll do anything. For instance, in Liverpool, uh, the club has, has spoken to the Hillsborough families' support groups to see what they think about it. And uh, they certainly wouldn't proceed unless um, they got full backing from the fans on that one. Mm. Right, front page of The Express, the government will be very pleased with this headline uh, and it previews the fact that Boris Johnson is uh, flying out to the United States this week. Uh, the rest of us are not allowed to go to America, but he is as British Prime Minister. What will be his uh, job there, do you think, Dave? Well, it's his first trip to the White House since Joe Biden became uh, President of the United States. He's taking with him Liz Truss, four days into the job as Foreign Secretary to launch a big charm offensive. There's a huge backdrop here of the row with France, with President Macron uh, getting more and more irate over this uh, submarine building deal with Australia, America and the UK. Um, so the, there's quite a lot to talk about. We've also got Afghanistan. There's, um, the, the, uh, but, but green issues are going to be one of the big big talking points. Uh, he's he's going to try to drum up support for this COP26 summit in Glasgow in November, where 100 world leaders are on board to try and stop climate change. So there's a lot to talk about there. The Express have got on, however, this uh, appalling phrase of levelling up, the levelling up that he uses. I'm um, not quite sure what it means. It probably means, um, I think it means making everybody, the poorer people, better off. But it seems that um, Boris Johnson wants to roll this out across the world, uh, spreading the vaccine to countries who can't afford it and raising living standards everywhere. I think we all think that's probably a good idea anyway. Yes, whether it's achievable is a different matter because it's, it's, it's proving slightly more challenging in this country, never mind the rest of the world. Yeah. Um, right, front page of the Sunday Telegraph. Interesting photo that they have chosen to put on. Uh, the headline is Moving with the Times and it is a picture of John Waite who won the Great British Bake Off back in 2012. He is now a contestant in Strictly and alongside uh, Johannes Radovi is the first all-male pairing on Strictly Come Dancing. This is Britain 2021. Uh, what do you think of this, Dave? Yes, well, um, it certainly had a bit of extra spice to the show. I mean, they had a, an all-female dancing partnership, didn't they, with yeah. the Olympic boxer Nicola Adams uh, recently, and this is the first uh, male pair. Um, I think the, the South African dancer, who's um, uh, the professional in this one, um, uh, is gay and has said he got a lot of victimization in his homeland uh, over being gay. So he's particularly proud about this. Um, but it will, of course... Um, uh, add, add a bit of um, diversity to the show. Um, I'm told but that um, the uh, the tango was originally a dance between two men anyway, um, supposed to recreate some kind of um, uh, war dance oh, yeah. effect. Yes, um, so yeah, there's nothing unusual about two men or two women dancing together anyway, so, so good luck to them. Yeah. But it'll be worth watching. People who like the show will uh, will love it, I'm sure. Thank you very much, Dave. What, what are your plans for today? Anything interesting? My plans today are to go down to the supermarket and stock up with meat until it rolls. No, seriously. Um, <laughs> and, then I'm, and then I'm off to the gym. This is my day off, so I'm going to the gym and I may re-watch the pool playing Crystal Palace on the telly. Fair enough. Do not panic by. Thank you very much, Dave. Thanks for talking to us. David Wooding, political editor of The Sun. Uh, right, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. That's our look at the papers. Right, I we think we're going to bring you the weather now, are we? Hello there. Yesterday, we saw top temperatures up to 24 or 25 degrees for